so uh, in terms of alternative medicine and MS, for many, many years people with MS haven't had an interest in alternative or unconventional medicine. Uh, most people with MS have an interest in mixing that with their conventional medicine, but even now uh, many healthcare professionals are not trained in unconventional medicine, so uh, there's still lots of education that needs to be done with health professionals and with people with MS on just what are the facts, like what's the transparent uh, approach to risks and benefits of different unconventional therapies, and if you look at the facts, some of these unconventional therapies should be avoided, some are potentially very dangerous, and others are promising or should actually be part of the standard of care for people with MS. So it's this very broad spectrum. So that's sort of the uh, mission behind a lot of the writing and speaking that I do. And then also to sort of take the unconventional medicine, blend that with the conventional medicine. And then the third area is people's lifestyle. You know, how people live their lives has an impact potentially on their MS, certainly has an impact on the health of the nervous system. So the broad umbrella approach is integrative medicine, mixing conventional, unconventional, and lifestyle approaches. I think many MS uh, health professionals don't even know this uh, uh, little tidbit of fact, which is that of all the very formal, randomized clinical trials of marijuana products, uh, MS is second only to chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting for the number of trials. So actually there are 19 different randomized controlled trials of marijuana products in MS showing benefit for pain, people's sense of muscle stiffness may help as well with sleep, especially sleep interrupted by pain and muscle stiffness. The challenge is those studies have been done with research grade preparations that are free of contaminants and that's, uh, those products are not available in U.S. dispensaries. So there's a, what's called a lack of fidelity. You can't take the clinical trial results with these particular products and go out, tell a patient to go to a dispensary and buy those products because those products just are not available. Added into that is the very, very complex pharmacology of cannabis where you have more than a hundred potentially pharmacologically active compounds. Each of those compounds may have five to ten different pharmacological effects. Some of the compounds might actually antagonize each other's effects. So you've got a hundred compounds, five to ten pharmacological effects. It's kind of overwhelming to try to theorize what the uh, potential uh, therapeutic effects might be or uh, side effects. So that's, that's a real challenge with, with many plant-based products or herbs. Uh, and I think that comes up frequently with cannabis and I think that's an element of uh, this whole treatment approach that's not often not appreciated by health professionals and people with MS, the complexities of trying to understand what a product in a dispensary might, the effects it might have on someone.